I will cover individual locations more in-depth around the Incas in separate videos, but in this video I'm just going to cover the amazing Inca polygonal stonework, this new proposed method of building, and why I think this could actually be the answer to how the Incas set their stone walls so fantastically. Inca masonry is highly regarded as some of the most advanced stonework on the planet, especially as it was done by an ancient culture who we are generally taught only had access to primitive tools and building methods. It's no wonder why even the top researchers and scientists around the world are still scratching their heads about how these stones were cut and fit together so perfectly and uniquely. The stonework is truly mesmerising to look at, every block being individually shaped and cut to fit the ones surrounding it, where not a pin, a piece of paper, or a razor blade could be squeezed in the joints. It's like an elegantly perfect megalithic jigsaw puzzle. The material used for the blocks ranges from limestone in mainly foundation constructions to granite and andesite which would usually be used for the more prominent constructions or widely visible walls. Some of the most notable places featuring this type of architecture include Machu Picchu, Sacsayhuaman, Cusco and Olente Tambo in Peru. Many researchers point towards this method of building also being a great advantage when it comes to protecting a structure from earthquakes, and I've heard this architecture referred to as earthquake-proof numerous times, as earthquake vibration would effectively dislodge them slightly during the event, but the larger stones act as kind of a framework for the smaller stones, so that they stay around their relative positions, allowing all the blocks to slot back together more easily with just gravity when the vibrations settle. Perhaps the most amazing thing is that the stones are fit together so perfectly without the use of any mortar at all. This has always been a right head-scratcher for even the best minds out there, with many attributing the stonework to being done by lost advanced ancient civilizations, or as usual, aliens. Well, possibly until recently anyway, from a paper published a little over a year ago. Now on to the new proposed method. I'll also add relevant links in the description if you'd like to learn more about it or just learn more detail. So a researcher by the name of Helmut Trebusch published a paper in December 2017 in which he refers to work from researchers centuries earlier who talk about a reddish mud which was used in the processing of the joints on the walls and did act as a kind of mortar during construction. So Trebuche points to this possibly being some kind of processed material from a byproduct of mining in locations with a high sulphide content. This is basically known as acid mine water, and is widely known about today. But in a nutshell, certain bacteria in the water starts a chemical reaction which can wear down rocks with a rich silica content, such as the stone used in the Inca walls. So this would mean that if you had a controlled solution or a paste of this acidic byproduct, you could effectively carve the stones roughly into shape, then spread the paste or solution on top of a stone before putting another one on it, and then just let it sit there, and it would corrode the stone joints to squeeze together from the sheer weight of the stones. This would also help explain the smooth edges and the corners, and the glazed or glossy appearance to the joints in some of the faces. To me anyway, this makes the most sense out of any other hypothesis that has been presented about how the Inca executed this amazing construction technique, but I need to read through the paper again at some point to properly digest some of the ideas and thoughts, as well as cross-referencing them with past ideas and see if this hypothesis holds water over time. Not acid mine water though, as it might eat away the idea. So on that note, I won't go any deeper for now, I'll save that for a more detailed video in the future. So what do you think? Do you think this hypothesis makes the most sense so far like I do? Do you think an existing hypothesis already explains it and we just don't see it yet? Or do you have another explanation worth considering? After all, this stonework is famous from the Inca culture, but architecture like this is also seen in many places all over the world, even on Rapa Nui in the middle of the ocean. Well, please leave a comment with your thoughts, and as always, I look forward to seeing this hypothesis being discussed so we can determine how likely it is to be true or not. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves out there.